Hello and welcome to this episode of Danny's Tips. A lot of times, we take pictures in undesirable weather. And replacing the sky usually means that you have to spend a lot of time masking and cutting. But there's another way that's way easier and faster. In this Photoshop tutorial, you'll learn an incredibly cool trick on how to replace grey cloudy skies with a sunny blue sky. It's fast and easy, and you can do it with just a few layers. If you're interested, keep watching to find out how it's done. If you want to take your work to the next level, try out some of my Photoshop actions and Lightroom presets at sparklestock.com. There are gigabytes of presets, actions, product mockups, and graphics for you to download. I'm constantly updating the website with new products. Check it out at sparklestock.com and use the promo code DENNY for 10% off. First, open a photo of a grey overcast sky. By the way, this technique will also work with overexposed skies. The photo I'm using isn't anything special, but I'm just using it because it makes a good example. There's some trees on the side here which would typically take a lot of time and effort to mask out. And this is a good example of when the sky swapping technique is most useful. Next, drag and drop a photo of a sky. If you don't have any, I have a couple sky photos that you can download for free and the link is in the video description below. Roughly scale and position it to where you like it to be. It doesn't need to be exact because you can always change it later. Next, we're going to blend the sky using a technique called luminosity masking. This lets you blend your layer based on the luminosity of the layers below. To do this, right click on the layer and then go to blending options. Near the bottom of the panel, drag the black slider towards the right. You will see that the sky starts to disappear where the dark areas are. Move it until it covers the sky. It looks pretty good so far, but if we zoom into the trees here, you can see that the edges aren't smooth at all. I'm going to go back into the blending options. Here's a trick to make it smoother. Hold the Alt or Option key and then drag the slider. You'll notice that it will split in half. Spread the two half sliders which will smooth out the edges like this. When you're done, click OK and your sky should be blended in. Most of the sky has been blended in and we didn't have to do much. But there are other areas that we need to manually mask out. So for this, go into your layers panel and while holding the Alt or Option key, click on the Add Layer Mask button. Holding the Alt or Option key while clicking on this button will create an inverted layer mask. So instead of a layer mask that's filled with white, it'll fill it with black. Select the brush tool and make sure that your foreground color is white. If it isn't, you can quickly reset it by pressing D on your keyboard. I'm going to right click on the document and choose a large semi soft brush. Paint over the overcast area and your sky will magically appear. We're almost done. The sky exposure doesn't quite match the image. To fix this, go into the adjustments panel and add a brightness contrast adjustment layer. If you know how to use the curves adjustment, you can use that as well, but for beginners, I recommend sticking with the brightness contrast adjustment layer. With this adjustment, you can change the brightness, but it's going to affect the entire image. To make it so it only affects the layer below, click on this button here. This will snap your adjustment layer to a layer below. Adjust the settings so it blends in with your photo. If you want to adjust the color, you can go into the adjustments panel and add a hue saturation adjustment layer. Here, you can tweak the hue very slightly which will change the color of the sky. And you can also change the saturation to match your photo. If this layer is affecting the entire image instead of just the sky, click on this button here to clip it to the layer below. Finally, we're going to transform the sky. You can scale and resize the sky any way you like with the transform tool and you can access that tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. But before you do this, make sure you click on this link icon here to unlink your layer from your layer mask. Otherwise, when you transform it, it will transform your mask as well which will do something weird like this. In addition to resizing and repositioning your sky, you can also hold the Ctrl or Command key and drag one of the corners to skew it. 
You can also right click inside the transform box and flip it horizontally. Keep adjusting it until you're done. Here's how the image looks like before and after. By the way, if you like this tutorial, then you'll probably like my Sky Replacer Photoshop actions. The free version will let you replace grey or overcast skies, and it comes with 3 sky textures. If you upgrade to the pro version, and thank you so much for your support by the way, you get 2 additional actions. One to replace clear skies, and the other to replace deep blue skies, like the kind of skies that you get if you were shooting with a polarizing filter. It also comes with 22 high res sky textures for you to choose from. I've been shooting real estate photography for over 3 years now, and these actions have solved one of the most annoying issues. That is that here in Vancouver, it rains a lot. But with these Photoshop actions, I'm still able to give my clients the sunny photos that they want, even on cloudy days. So you never have to reschedule a shoot anymore. Anyways, the download link is in the video description below, so click on that link and give it a try. Here are some more before and after examples. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please remember to hit the like button. So today we replaced the sky using a technique called luminosity masking. And that really cuts down the amount of time that you spend like selecting and masking. So it's a super useful technique. Uh, if you don't know much about it, check out my video on luminosity masking. You'll learn two ways of doing it. One is with the layer mask method, which is the most popular way of doing it. The second is with the layer style method. It has its own pros and cons but a lot of people don't know about it. So check that video out if you haven't already. I also want to show you something really cool I got. Um, Palette Gear sent me this really cool control system. There's knobs, there's buttons, and there's sliders. They attach magnetically, and you can customize it to anything you like. For example, let's say you use Lightroom a lot. You can put in some like sliders here, one can control the exposure, one can control the white balance. You can approve and reject files with this. Control the color, saturation, vibrance, uh, etc. And when you're traveling, you can minimize it to something really small like this. Very useful. Um, I will be making a review on it, but I want to get used to it first. So far, what I can tell you is that the build quality is an A. Software is pretty close to an A. It's missing a few features that I really want and it's so close to being the perfect thing for me. But I'll tell you more in the video review. Anyways, I hope you have an amazing day. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.